Training.com, CWI prep course. Come visit us at our website at train-eng.com, pronounced training. This is our CWI prep course. This is a, as you go through some of these videos, these will be some snippets or samples out of our online training course. If you like what you see here in the sample section, come and visit us and take the course. Our CWI, CWE online part A video course, $149. It's um, self-study, CWI exam. Everything's an online video course. CWI prep course, confined spaces, module two, part four. We're gonna take a look at welding in confined spaces. Welding in confined spaces is important to the welding inspector due to the fact that there's so much welding that goes on in confined spaces, be it in a shipyard, tanks, voids, um, places like that, or on uh, offshore oil rigs. I don't even know all the different combinations of welding in confined spaces that can happen, but it's something that we need to be cognizant of and really take a good look at. Welding in Confined Spaces, ANSI Publication Z117.1, Safety Requirements for Working in Tanks and Other Confined Spaces, latest edition, of course, um, is the governing document for welding in confined spaces. Welding in a confined space can be extremely dangerous. Without adequate ventilation, welding can transform an acceptable atmosphere into a toxic one very quickly. When welding in a confined space, atmospheric monitoring should be conducted before anyone enters the space and periodically during the entry to ensure that the process of welding is not creating a hazardous atmosphere. Um, welding in confined spaces, there is just so many things that can go sideways in a confined space. Obviously, um, this was a problem because OSHA and ANSI had to you know, come up with safety requirements for working in tanks. And even when you do things right, things can go wrong. They shouldn't, but it can. Um, you know, every year there's people that are killed in confined space accidents. So it, it's worth, uh, you know, understanding and reading these requirements before you go into working in a confined space. Confined space safety tips. Um, other than reading the ANSI document and being familiar with that and confined space safety, notify the responsible authority to obtain an entry permit. Um, be sure that the issuing authority that welding will be conducted during entry. Um, conduct initial monitoring to ensure that it is safe to enter. Conduct periodic monitoring throughout the entry to ensure that the area remains safe for entrance. Continuous ventilation should be provided in a, the confined space. Pure oxygen should never be used for ventilation. Pure oxygen is bad for ventilation because it can cause an explosion. That's why we don't like pure oxygen. Pure oxygen and oil, gas, grease, anything combustible, it is a bad combination. Um, ensure that all potential energy sources have been shut off or disconnected. Um, gas cylinders and welding power sources should remain outside the confined space. When not in use, all torches or other gas or oxygen supplied equipment should be removed from the space. You don't want torches, let's say you've got a TIG torch that's leaking argon. You don't want it filling that space up with argon. Argon isn't poisonous, but it'll choke you. Um, it'll cause asphyxiation. You won't be able to breathe. You'll never know it. Always wear a safety harness and have rescue equipment on site. Also have communication device available to contact emergency personnel such as fire and rescue if needed. Leave the space immediately if conditions become unsafe. Don't mess around in there. Get out. Um, wear appropriate PPE, personnel protective equipment, welding helmet, gloves, whatever. You as the inspector are probably not going to need those things, but wear the appropriate PPE. Um, there should be an attendant. The attendant must remain outside the space the entire time and maintain contact with the entrance. 
So if there's somebody in a confined space, there's got to be an attendant outside. Must. This isn't negotiable. Must remain outside the space the entire time. As a weld inspector, before you enter a space, there should be you should look. You should take your own safety in your own hands and look at the confined space entry permit. See when was the last time they did a atmospheric monitoring test. Make sure that everything's been checked. Um, you need to look at these things before you go into a space. You might not be intimately familiar with that job site. You might be just have gotten there two hours before. Hey, we need you to buy this off. We need you to crawl inside here. You know, you need to take care of your own safety. And you need to be cognizant that there are things such as a confined space entry permit. And um, before you go crawling in ta any random tank or void or space, you need to look at this documentation and you need to be sure that it's um, up to snuff, that it's, um, that it's good to go before you go crawling in there. Welding of containers. Any container of a hollow body, such as a can, tank, hollow compartment in a welding, or a hollow area on a casting should be given special attention prior to welding. Even though it may contain only air, heat from welding, the metal can raise the temperature of the enclosed air or gas to a dangerously high pressure causing the container to explode. Hollow areas can contain oxygen enriched air or fuel gases which can be hazardous when heated or exposed to an arc or flame. Cleaning the container is necessary in all cases before cutting and welding. And even this sometimes isn't exactly the only answer. Um, we, there's all kinds of horror stories about people that um, were welding on, you know, gas tanks that they emptied out and then they hook up a vacuum cleaner to suck out the fumes and just these terrible stories of things gone wrong. Um, you need to be really, really careful around the welding of containers and empty barrels and things like this. Um, a lot of recommendations include um, filling it up with water or purging it with another type of um, non-combustible gas. Um, you really need to look into the welding of containers before you do it and um, see what the OSHA um, rules are, but you, you really need to be careful. If you see somebody welding on a container, you probably should mention it to them and ensure that they're doing it safely. Highly toxic materials. Toxic metals, including heavy metals, are individual metals and metal compounds that negatively affect people's health. Some toxic semi-metallic elements, such as arsenic and selenium, are on this list. In very small amounts, many of these metals are necessary to support life. However, in larger amounts, they become toxic. They may build up in a biological system and become a significant health hazard. That's telling us that certain things like selenium or arsenic, you, you can handle, but too much of it, it's a bad thing. And welding can generate some of these, uh, these metals, and you might take them in by smoke and whatnot. So it's something you need to be cognizant of. And that's why we have, you know, uh, we try to ventilate welded areas. We try and, you know, move these things out so we don't have to ingest them into our body. And I don't know if ingest is by breathing, but so hopefully we don't take them into our body. And like it says, they may build up in a biological system and become a significant health hazard. So just be cognizant that there are highly toxic materials and heavy metals are on that list. Here's a list of heavy metals, um, toxic metals. Um, antimony, arsenic, barium, beryllium, cadmium, chromium, cobalt, copper, lead, manganese, mercury, nickel, selenium, silver, vanadium, and zinc. And they're not necessarily poisonous or dangerous. You know, copper, we, we, uh, we have copper all the time. We make pipes out of it. But if you get too much of it in the wrong way, it can be a problem. Lead, we don't make pipes out of lead anymore. Mercury, you throw a couple of glasses of that on the ground and you've got a significant uh, eco ecological disaster. You don't want mercury getting into groundwater and things. Selenium, silver, vanadium, zinc, 
um, all these things can can uh, can go bad for you in the right amount. So just be uh, cognizant of the fact that these highly toxic materials are out there and they can be contained in base metals, consumables, coatings, and they can be kicked off in the smoke that's generated from welding. So um, it's just the, a lot of this information will be on the MSDSs for uh, welding filler metals. So just be cognizant that they're there and try and avoid some of these contaminants if at all possible. Well, avoid them all if at all possible. In this module, we covered welding in confined spaces, confined space entry permits, welding of containers, and highly toxic materials. All very important subjects for weld inspectors because a lot of weld inspection takes place in confined spaces, refineries, shipyards, power plants, boilers, pressure vessels, all these kind of places. So you're going to run across you know, welding in containers, confined spaces, um, and highly toxic materials. So you need to be cognizant that these things exist. They do pose a threat, and you need to be educated about them for your health and for others. Unlike a lot of other programs, we've got it set up so that you can do it a la carte. Um, if you only need to, you know, we've got different parts of the CWI course broken out. So if you don't need to sit through and take safe practices for welding inspectors or you have some strengths that you know of and you want to streamline the process and only hit the sections where you don't really have a strong or strong background or a great deal of proficiency, our program is set up so you can take some of these parts of the CWI online course a la carte. Pick and choose, put together what you want. Leave the rest, like a Chinese food buffet. We've got one section where it's questions, questions, and more questions. Um, we've got a whole number of CWI self-study question bank, 40 bucks. Come on in, take it, take a look, see. Um, if you just need questions, if you've sat through another course and you just want to keep hitting the material, check out our uh, question bank. 40 bucks.